Now we get some really cool stuff in scripts. So, again, there's two scripts. Uh, Lua is a little bit more complex, but for example, auto revive. If you die, it'll instantly revive you. Um, there's some some stats warning system. So if you click that, and someone enters your world with uh, modified stats, so let's say they have 99 on everything, and they are soul level 60, this will tell you that they're cheating, basically. Um, pick up warning, same thing. If someone puts down a, a an invalid item to get you soft banned, uh, this will warn you before you pick it up. And I do believe prevent autopilot is might be like prevent someone from crashing your game with the autopilot crash when they die. Uh, but what you're really looking at is the ASM. It's the stuff that you're gonna need for like making stuff or making builds. I briefly touched on it on the first video, but for protection you have unlimited iframes. That's like one of the most useful ones if you just want to run to a specific boss or you want to get a specific item. You don't want to be bothered with mobs or anything. You just click that and you can't be hit. You can't die with normal means, of course. Prevent one hit death is probably the cursed dagger effect. So these two will prevent you from being cursed instantly with someone cheating on and trying to kill you with a cursed dagger. And no fall damage, self-explanatory, you will not have fall damage. Uh, we can test that, test that right now. So for example, if I drop from right here, you see that I took some fall damage. And with that script on, I, in theory, should not be taking any fall damage. So we click on that, and let's test it. No fall damage. Basically, there's no fall animation. You just, like, stand there. So I guess that's how it works. So that's protection. No durability damage, self-explanatory. Uh, not really needed in this game unless somebody uses, you know, tries to break all your equipment on purpose with a, with a cheat. No equipment load basically just means you're just gonna fast roll. As you can see, I'm rolling really far, and it's gonna tell me that I have no equipment load. As you can see, zero out of 75.6. So all of this, you probably don't need explanations for. No crossbar reload, same. No clip. Now this is an interesting one. Um, sometimes you just wanna cross or get a shortcut and you don't wanna run around or whatever for some reason. So first you click on no clip, then you enable the no clip, right? But as you can see, this this doesn't really allow me to no clip. This is just buggy. So with Control N, I can enable it, and with Control sorry with yeah. So if I click Control N, I can no clip out of stuff. It's a little bit strange how the movement works. Like, it depends on your camera and everything. Uh, you can go up or down. So, your camera is like what's gonna. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm really high up. I don't know how to get down. Door stuck. Can't get out. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to prevent fall damage so that I don't die immediately. And if I click Control N, or if I just simply disable this, it'll drop me down. So again, I'm not really sure how to use it properly. I've always had trouble with it uh, moving with no clip. Since there's no collision, you can't run. You kind of float around. It's a little bit strange. You can, you know, mess with it. See what you can come up with. Um, upgrades need no materials. Again, I covered that briefly on the previous video. Self-explanatory, when you go to Andre with this on, it'll not ask you for any Titanite of any kind. It will ask you for souls, however, so make sure to bring souls. But um, don't use this online. It'll ban you, probably. Offline, I have not had any problems with it, but you never know. It, this is much, much safer than spawning in Titanite, because spawning in Titanite or gems will ban you, for sure. Uh, act as all shop inventory. This is basically the same as giving the handmaiden all the ashes out of all the game, so you can buy anything. Act as all bonfires. Just allows you to warp to any bonfire. It doesn't activate them, so when you warp to them, they'll still be, you know, unlit. You can light them up then and there, which is not a problem. As soon as you deactivate this, 
any bonfire that's not activated will not be accessible. So, you know, if you just try to access all of them, just uh, access them with this script and then just light them up individually. 100% drop dead rate, again, self-explanatory. When you kill a mob, it'll always drop whatever it can drop. So, for example, if I turn that on, let's go kill some mobs. And it'll always drop everything. So, this guy dropped everything it can drop. So the crossbow, the helm, the trouser, bolts, and the raw gem. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure what these guys can drop, probably just a shitty soul. Uh, broken straight sword, town knight shard, raw gem, all that kind of all that kind of stuff, right? So this will again ban you. Most of these will online. So do it at your own, you know, discretion. Offline, uh, iffy. Let's just assume everything will ban you again. That's why you need an alternate account. Jump height modifier. This is just how much you jump, how far. I'm not sure what this does. Monster vac. Ooh, this is this could crash your game, so I'm not going to use it. It depends, really. If you click that, every single monster that is on the entire level is going to teleport to you, to your location. So you're going to have a lot of people. Maybe I'll do that at the end of the video and crash. Summon sign vac. Basically, uh, if a phantom puts the summon sign anywhere and you click that, it'll give you the prompt to summon them no matter where you are. So it kind of vacuums the summon sign to you. It's useful. If you like, would have to run all the way to Pontiff Sullivan and you are close to the Silver Knights, again, this is cheating, but, or if you're doing a video and, you know, you ran somewhere, people put their signs down, you just summon your, the signs to you. This one is a really, really useful one for if you want to make a video, you don't want any mobs, you don't want to go around, you just click this and every mob in the level will die. As you can see, I got a bunch of souls. Um, Sometimes if it's an auto drop item like the crystal lizards, it'll give you the items as well. Item vac, I do believe every single item just vacuum to my place. That's probably gonna lag. So as you can see, I can just pick up everything that was dropped. No, not just dropped, everything that's in the level. I could just summon to me. So that's a pretty cool one. And this is the PBC sign cooldown, you know. You don't really have to mess with it, it's really quick. It's five seconds, so. That is all for ASM scripts. This is like one of the most useful ones. Uh, flags are things that you've done in the game that trigger a flag. So for example, character flags. Uh, event super armor triggers when you have an ultra weapon and you have a certain amount of poise. Uh, but if you change it to one, you get infinite poise. So as you can see, I'm gonna try to get hit without attacking and Oh, but everyone's dead. So never mind. You're just gonna have to take my word for it. This gives you infinite poise. It's just all it does. So put that. Again, values, zero means disabled, one means enabled. Really, really easy. Um, I wouldn't mess with this one, enable character ASM, but no hit, again, it's like, you don't have a hitbox, no damage. You will get hit, you will be hit in the hit animation, but you will take no damage. No dead, basically when you are at 1 HP, you cannot go lower. This is cool for if you want to fight someone and, you know, you don't want to be resummoning someone, you know, a friend or whatever. As soon as you hit 1, it's considered a loss, but you can just heal up. No attack. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. I, don't, I think you can't attack, but I'm not sure. No stamina consumption. This is a pretty useful one because... I mean, as, as it says, as you can see, my stamina bar won't, won't decrease at all. This is, this is good for, like, clearing bosses quickly. You just put on infinite iframes and no stamina and make your character Super Saiyan 5. And you can kill him super quick. No FP consumption, the same as stamina consumption. No move, just you can't move. No goods consume, a uh, pretty useful one. I mean, you can always give, you, give yourself more. But as you can see, I use this and it won't consume it. Any consumable you can use, and it will, you know, it will stay at its current number. You won't be actually using them, so it's basically infinite items. No update. Not sure what that does. If it's an update on the game, but probably not important. Toggle draw. Not sure what it does. I've never messed with it. I've never needed it. Uh, back read toggle. Again, this. I'm not sure what it does. This one though, disable gravity. It's a pretty useful one. So if you turn that into a one. Uh, everything becomes a floor, so you can just walk in thin air. 
it's cool for taking certain like shots like let's say you you want to, to just record yourself flying or you know whatever or maybe you want to where's my binoculars i don't even know if i have them on this character i guess not but let's say you want to take a cool shot in a spot that you know like right here you normally can't get to it you put out your binoculars uh, it's pretty useful for video making i use it all the time other than that we have invulnerability, yeah, same as iframes, you don't need to do that particular one. Iframes read only is the same, and parry read only is kind of a funny one. Anything you attack that has a hitbox will trigger the parry animation on you, not on them. It's, it, this does not mean that anybody that tries to hit you will get parried, the opposite. Anyone you try to hit will parry you. So, I mean, it's a good meme, but it's not really like useful for much just for a good meme for videos unless you know you want people to use it on you so that's it for character flags world flags are flags in the world so for example bonfires so if you want the bonfires to be enabled you simply click on you know the general area cemetery of ash and the ones are the ones that are lit and the zeros are the ones that are unlit if you want to light them up or you want them accessible and you don't you want them accessible forever then you just turn these zeros into a one. Again, you can access them with the access all bonfire script, but that will not light them up. That's the difference. This will light them up forever. So they're accessible forever, but this will probably get you banned if you do it in the wrong order. So do that again at your own discretion. And it's the same for every area. As you can see, I have some of them turned on, some of them not. Bosses, this is just have you defeated him or have you not? So Udix uh, Gundir, defeated, if it's a 1, then it's yes. Uh, encounter, if it's a 1, then it's yes. And this is basically, if you remember, when you first go into fight Udix Gundir, uh, you first have to pull out the sword, and you get a few free hits on him. But after, if you die, then it's a flock wall. And that's the case for a lot of the bosses. Some bosses, like, they, after the cutscene, you will get into the fight, and then when you die, you have to go through a fog wall, and the fight will, like, already start without no cutscene. So this is basically what it means, encountered. Uh, same pulled sword for this particular boss, but this is the same. Defeated, yes. Have you encountered him? Yes. If you put defeated, yes, and encountered, no, so zero, it could flag your account because the game will be like, wait, how have you defeated him if you haven't encountered him? So always be careful with that. So that's all for the bosses. They're all the same. Same with doors and shot shortcuts. This just means, one, they've been opened or they've been accessed. Zero, they have not. So very simple. Elevators, it's the very same thing as the, the doors. Are they enabled? You know how you sometimes can't access you know an elevator one way until you access it the other way? It's the same. So apparently this is the same for elevators. Gestures, have you unlocked them? You don't really have to do any of this. For some reason, there's only four. Just use the unlock all gestures. They'll be fine. Same with illusory walls. You know, have you destroyed like have you destroyed them or not? NPCs, blacksmith, if he's uh, friendly, if you haven't, if it's a zero, then you've aggroed him. And has he been killed? Zero, so uh, he's still alive, right? Again, one is yes, and zero is no. This is all in binary. Uh, miscellaneous. So, uh, true air is is the different endings. Dragon cell armor, like. I'm not really sure. So rebirths. This is another one that you can do. So right here, uh, rebirth. You have five rebirths, as you know, with the Rosaria. Every time you use it, it'll change this zero into a one. So I've used the first one, but I still have four active. If you've used all of them and you want to use uh, Rosarias, then you can turn them into a zero. But make sure to turn them from the fifth to the first. So let's say all of these are ones, and you want to, you know, be able to do this five more times. Simply change the fifth one to a zero first, then the fourth one, then the third one, then the second one, and finally the first one, if that's what you want. Because if you just turn whichever at any number, again, the game will be like, it doesn't make sense. How can you have done the fourth one, but not the second one? So just to be safe, not really sure if it'll matter too much, but to be safe, that's just the logic of it. Um, a lock, undead match, that basically, just the bones. Uh, probably unlocking it this way will ban you, and if you're banned, you probably won't be using the undead match a lot, so I'm not sure how useful that is. 
uh, non-respawning items, some of the, uh, obviously, the, sorry, enemies, some of the enemies that don't respawn, so crystal lizards, certain mini bosses, the mimics never respawn, some NPCs don't. I mean, not, no NPCs, the aggro ones do, so you can just click z um, zero if you want them to be alive, and one if you want them dead. And finally, miscellaneous, this is this collision, I'm not really sure what it does, we're gonna leave it for now. But those are the world flags in the flags category. Everything's really nice and, and neat. So helpers, I already went to item swap, so I'm not going to go through it again. Bullets, so this is kind of getting a little bit more complicated. I'm not really good at it. But, so this basically allows you to change certain effects for the bullets. Like if you shoot a firebomb, it'll shoot out, um, I don't know, uh, sunlight spear. How you do that, you find the address for the Sunlight Spear, you apply it to your bullet, you, you can change the timing, you can change how big it is, you can change a lot of stuff, but that is a lot more advanced than I can show you. So if you want to do that, I, I will refer you to someone who knows and who's willing to tell you. And here's something a little bit easier. So for example, uh, last weapon highlighted, right? So right now there's nothing, but if I highlight let's say, my guild greatsword, it'll give me stats. Right, so these are the stats for my guild greatsword. Durability, damage, just all kinds of, all kinds of stuff. What you can do here, what people do if you've ever wondered, how can they curse me or whatever, they change the, should be somewhere in here. They change the effect on hit, which I can't find for some reason, but it's here somewhere, I promise you. They change the effect on hit to insta-curse you, and that's all it does, really. And that's the only reason, or maybe you can make it faster or make more damage. Changing pretty much anything here will ban you. You can do that with arrows, you can do that with items, pretty much any projectile. You can do that stuff with your... Um, with your armor can be really cool, like your you know, your helmet can give you infinite stamina, or your helmet can make you explode on hit, or any number of things. It can make really cool stuff for footage, but I don't really know how to work it. Uh, that's helpers, for the most part. Uh, certain effects. Last object hit, obviously. Same thing, like what happens to the last object you hit, you change certain values, it does different things. Uh, the params, I wouldn't mess with it too much, it's just, uh, some scripts. As you can see, make projectiles not consumable, but we can already do that. Roy cosplay, not sure what that does. Um, so, for example, this, every catalyst can cast everything, so you can use whatever catalyst to cast every single spell. So, curse dagger, uh, I'm not really sure if that works anymore, it used to, you can just click that and if you had a dagger on it will insta curse people not something that you do because we don't do that kind of stuff here right um place a red sign on weapon equip if you want to do that i guess and the as you might have heard maybe the onikiru and ubadachi had a different weapon art in the works and it was scrapped it was really cool it, weapon art and it also had a parry Really cool parry too, and the super OP parry. So if you want to mess around with a friend and try these, I've done it. It's really fun. Um, what else? Effects. Restrict malicious effects. That's the cursed dagger, for example. Uh, every pine bundle infinite, but we already can do that differently. Uh, Nightwing buff increases all stats by thirty. So these are just uh, different scripts. You can play around with them if you like. Let's see what else is here. Remove FP and stamina cost for Crystal Hail. Like, just for Crystal Hail. Why? Because, right? So, like I said, Prime Patcher is just really specific. Uh, perseverance Warmth. So, every time you persevere, you get warmth, I guess. Set the damage of Sacred Flame. Custom Dragon. Allowed to break the Fog Gates. I don't know. You can, you can like... If, if you don't mind your account being effed up, you can certainly play around with any of this that you like. Some might crash your game, but nothing will do any sort of harm to your PC. 
Um, and that's it for Pram Patcher. Now the camera is something really cool. So you can attach the camera to something, to a specific place. Um, you can set the camera again to a specific place. So you can attach the camera to an enemy, for example. Or you can set it at a certain place. Like a bird's eye view or whatever. Uh, you can lock it in place. Free cam is something that will ban you, which is stupid because a lot of stuff that is really bad won't ban you, but free cam, god forbid. Um, so free cam. Free cam allows you, oh boy, allows you to just like drone the camera. Unfortunately, you cannot move your character while you're droning the camera, but you can get some really cool shots. Now, the way the game works is it only renders the game that is close to the camera. So as you can see, this is fine. But if I were to go, maybe some of these enemies will be really badly rendered, except there are no enemies because I killed them all. But if you're really far away from your character or you're not facing in the direction, the animations will be all choppy. And that is because the game is not trying to render those characters properly, just very basically, because you're not even supposed to see them. So if you're gonna record using free cam, you kinda have to keep the camera very close to the place you're recording. Uh, you know, you just have to play with it. But you can make some really cool shots, you know, pan it around, do some like, like cinematic views of the entire place. And as soon as you like unclick it, it'll just pull the camera back to where it's supposed to be. Uh, HUD, on or off, but dude, you can just change that <laughs> to your menu, you don't need this. Miscellaneous. Um, so just just the, the look up or look down limits, probably it just changes them. Uh, this disable auto follow cam, so you can just move your character and the camera will stay in place. So that's it for camera. Teleport. Um, you can teleport to your blood stain. You can set where your blood stain is if you just died or if you haven't picked it up. I picked it up so you can't see it. It's all there's no values because there's no blood stain. Um, that's pretty much it. Session info is a really good one that will not ban you. It's just information it gives you. Like it's not changing anything in your game, but it's giving you information. And I use this all the time to see if players are cheating or whatever. So right now there's no players in my world, but if you get invaded or whatever, you can just. Check everything about the player, their name, their level, their health, you know, their stamina, what attributes they have, what equipment they have, you know, and everything. And also you can, let's say you have a, a messed up, you know, a, a hacker enters your world, right? He enters your world, you know he's a hacker because you've seen him before. You can simply add him to the black separation crystal and it'll allow you to send him home. There are certain hackers that can combat this, but most script kitties won't be able to, and you simply just add them to this, and then you send them home. Um, teleport to self or backstab. I haven't been able to make it work. It basically just teleports you to a certain, to the player that you've chosen. This would be player one. But what does work is for you to teleport to the, to the player's position. And monster vac is the same as monster vacing for you, so bring in all the monsters to you, but Monster backing will bring every single monster in the map for them. This, even though I have a pretty high-end computer, has always crashed my game. Every single time. It probably crashes their game, but this is something you do, like, if you're a mean person. And, you know, they killed you and you want them their game to crash, so don't do it. Unless it's your friend and you just want to meme him. But don't do it for invasions, because it's really mean. And I'm not sure what camera does for them. And every single player will have the same options as these. So that's uh, the session info. Recently played with. It's the same as current, but it's for people that you're no longer in a lobby with, but that you just played with. So it does save the last five players you played with, which is really useful in case you like missed your opportunity to check them while they were playing your game. Uh, family share check. Not really sure what it does. But it might check if what they're do if their account is a family shared account and not a legit. Uh, mimic players on load. It's like really it's kind of cool. Um, when they spawn into your game, you will get their armor, their everything, their attributes, their equipment, everything they have. You will mimic them, and you can do that for and their name, everything. You can basically mimic them. And miscellaneous, sorry, miscellaneous stuff, player account. Um, 
for example, one. Player count one. But if I put two, then the game's gonna think that, you know, uh, there's a phantom in my world or an invader, and it will trigger a fog wall. I recently just used this for a video so that I could trigger a fog wall uh, as soon as I want it. And that's by changing the player count to two. And that's just as simple as that. And unlock summoning limit, it just allows you to summon, let's say you kill the boss of the area and you can only summon two red phantoms. If you want to summon more, you just click this and it'll allow you to summon the same as if the boss was alive. Debug stuff. Uh, I'm not really sure. I wouldn't mess with this too much. It's probably super armor. Yeah, so the durability. I wouldn't mess with this. Nothing you. This is just for people who will want to probably mine some of the data in the game. And work in progress, as it says, is work in progress. So, yeah. Iartha scripts, don't touch them. <laughs> don't touch, so... Don't touch anything, this this work in progress. Nothing you need here. Everything you need, I've already covered. So, yeah, guys. I mean, again, I hope this helps you with certain things. The best way to do it is to play around with some of the scripts. Do this at your own discretion because most of these will ban you. The simple fact of transferring a save and patching it with this uh, DS3 patcher will ban you. I know this, it will ban you. But if you just want it for footage and you don't need to play online, it's great. You know, I do it all the time for, for videos. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please put them on the comments down below. Uh, please, if the answer is in the video, I might not answer because it happened to me a lot on the last video that, you know, people were asking stuff that was in the video already. They just had to pay attention. But if it isn't or if you're a little bit confused about it, I will love to help you. And yeah, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, if you want to see more of this, uh, click on the subscribe button and I will see you guys on the next video.